So NASA just got back to me. Yeah, the National Aeronautics and Softball Administration with their top five softball stars to watch in the HBL this season. In alphabetical order, by first name, Callie Richards from Cassie Manorville starts us off. All conference, all section, all state team last year as a junior. She hit 532 with three home runs and 17 RBIs. Next up, another all state first team selection from a year ago, Cameron Kovars from Zimbrona Mazeppa. On the mound, Kovars was 14 and 5 with a 2.86. ERA at the plate. Covers racked up a 422 average with 31 RBIs and 27 runs scored. Third on the last list, Madison Burr from Cannon Falls. Not just an incredible volleyball player, Burr has had two straight seasons batting over 400 and an absolute vacuum for the Bombers at first base. Fourth on the list is out of Tiger Nation, baby. Sophomore Sidney Clark of Stewartville had an incredible freshman year, delivering seven of the ten wins for the Tigers on the mound while hitting 364. The final player, Tally Barons, and although the Bears will miss Macy Borowski, I'm telling you, Barons will definitely soften the landing as she is an incredible left-handed pitcher that will be the ace for a solid Byron program these next three years. Not just is dominant on the mound, 359 with 20 runs scored last season as just a freshman for Barons. Those are the top five stars to watch in the HBL this season, but there are plenty more we can talk about. Entire constellations, if you will, we are going to break down each roster of the nine conference teams for the 2024 season on deck. The premiere episode of What in the HBL, only on the Razzle Dazzle channel. Beneath his stormy surface flowed the warm tide of compassion and kindness. What the HBL. softball fans and welcome into the premiere episode of what in the HVL as we follow all nine softball teams from the Hiawatha Valley League here in southeastern Minnesota I'm Adam Peterson and I will be bringing you all the news for the 2024 softball season each week hoping to run down the scores stats and highlights of each team if you know me you know I'm a huge Stewartville Tiger fan, but hopefully I can shine a spotlight on the amazing female athletes that we have in this conference in a sport that is probably one of the most underappreciated around. Some people ask, why did you pick softball to start this What in the HBL podcast? Why not start with basketballs? You know, Stewartville's had a ton of success. Or football, you went in one state. Well, the easy answer is probably because softball is our family's favorite sport. But if I dive deeper into it, I think it's because... I admire what these student athletes are signing up for. Think about this. Softball is a sport that's predicated on failure. On average, players fail more than they succeed. I mean, a girl who fails six out of ten times at the plate has got to be considered an all-state quality, quality player. A girl that fails seven out of ten times is probably one of the top hitters on her team and considered for all conference. For a girl to sign up for a sport like that, almost guaranteeing that you will fail over and over and over again and still choose to commit to softball like that, I think you need to take your hat off to these ladies and I think they've earned the right to be recognized for what they do on the field. The other reason is the more my daughters play with athletes from other schools, the more I appreciate the amazing players and families that may live outside of Tiger Nation. As we try to teach our girls that you don't judge girls based on where they go to school or what softball teams they play for or anything like that, but treat them, um, judge them based on how they treat you as a person. And we have been so fortunate as a family to meet incredible, uh, other incredible families from Dover, 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 Yoda and Byron and Leward and Lake City and Century. And then our team being coached by someone from Cass and Manorville that was so kind. Uh, those are just a few of the communities to name. This is an opportunity for me to share with all of you the incredible ladies that we watch on the field, that we admire from afar, and sometimes even get the chance to interact with them and become friends with them uh, on the field, off the field, as we play in the spring and the summer. With games this week, at least scheduled this week, our first episode here is going to be dedicated to team previews of all 
nine conference schools and we will approach these in alphabetical order so you don't think I'm like playing favorites or stacking them in a certain order at least not playing favorites yet you know the Tigers baby I, I don't think even if you sent me free t-shirts from other teams I'm gonna wear them because I got all Tiger gear here also have to live with the head coach I want to give a big thank you before I start out to all the conference coaches who did reach back to me and have been so supportive and um, they sent their team previews and stats and anything to help me out I could not do it without them so make sure that you give your coaches a big thank you when you see them for the extra work that they put forth especially during the busiest time of the year practices in the season starting games are starting soon uh, some people are going on spring training trips um, so definitely give your coaching staff a big thank you for uh, putting the extra effort forth that we could recognize each of the ladies on your teams and the, the incredible years that they had last season as we go through the season, I'm hoping to do a weekly rundown of the scores and stats for all the teams as best I can with the information I have available. So probably going to be relying on the Post Bulletin or the internet a lot. But with that being said, if you're out there and you're listening and you want to send me scores or stats or pictures or videos of some of the top plays, you can send them to TigerNationAndBeyond at gmail.com. That's TigerNationAndBeyond at gmail.com. Just spell that all out. It's an email I used on my old Stewartville Tiger podcast that I retired uh, last year after five seasons. I'm open to any feedback, any tips, especially if I mess up name pronunciations. Those are always the things that probably hit my heart the hardest. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be disrespectful or anything I'm doing the best I can and this show is a team effort it's a collective effort and I want you all out there to be as much a part of it as I am here at least in front of the camera let's start the season previews because I'm excited to get the season rolling and to see what each of these Tim's teams bring to the HVL conference First, we're going to start with the Byron Bears. The Bears were 16-6 and overall and made it to the section championship game before falling to Winona. Three of the Bears' six losses last year came to that powerhouse Winona program. Byron finished second in the HBL at 7-1 and behind Zimbrota Mazeppa. Coach Jacob Harmon will return for his seventh year as head coach. And talking about head coaches that are busy, not only preparing for the season, it sounds like a little one is either on the way or maybe has already arrived. I don't know, but either way, congratulations to that program, that family, a little bear. Uh, arriving, what do you call that, a cub, I guess, uh, arriving into Byron's uh, den, if you will. Last year, you couldn't talk about the Bears without talking about one of the most dominant players in recent history for Southeastern Minnesota. I'm talking about Macy Borowski. First team, all conference, all section, all state she was unbelievable. 17 home runs, 55 RBIs the last two seasons. She struck out 225 batters last year in only 116 innings. She had a 0.90 ERA. She squared up on probably one of the most, the hardest hit balls I've ever seen in Stewartville. It was still going up on a line drive when it dented our brand new scoreboard a couple years ago. Unbelievable. I believe she's at Brown right now, uh, continuing her softball career at the D1 level. Also gone, sister Mia Borowski, Lindsay Schultz, a top-notch center fielder, leadoff hitter. She hit five, uh, 453 with 29 hits, 9 stolen bases, 13 RBIs. Emma Kramer's gone, Cadence Gentling's gone, Elizabeth Nordland's gone. And you think about that, that's a lot of seniors gone. But So with the departure of several of those top-tier players that I mentioned at graduation, Bears are going to be shifting their program to a younger group of girls. But make no mistake about it, do not confuse their age for how talented this group of girls are. They have an incredible sophomore and a group of a freshman, three freshman phenoms that they're going to be excited about, I bet, at least for the next three or four years. We're going to start that out with Tally Barons will take over as ace on the Byron pitching staff. And let me tell you, she is more than ready to do it. The last time I saw her in the circle was in Dome Ball in Austin. She racked up 19 strikeouts in seven innings. She's left-handed. She throws absolute gas. She can spin the ball. But what might be most impressive is what she does with her changeup. I promise you she will make more than a few hits look silly this year she can also hit in the box her freshman season she hit 359 with 23 hits 11 rbis 20 runs scored two doubles and she gave us in Stewartville nightmares as she hit both of her home runs off of us last season in two regular season games not good if you're a tiger fan but if you're a Bear fan, got to be excited to see Barons coming back for three more years. The three freshmen I talked about, Cadence Firstad, Mackenzie Steele, and Hattie Mathry. First, let's start out with Cadence Firstad. A ridiculous talent since we saw her back in like 10U for Byron softball. One of the best softball catchers I've seen in a long time. She has an absolute cannon for an arm. She's smooth behind the plate. We would just laugh at runners in summer ball when they think they could steal on her, and she would just 
just pick one off one after another. It was awesome to have her on our team. The thing is, she's probably just as good at shortstop, and she's an absolute vacuum at first base when I saw her during tryouts. Pretty much put her anywhere on the field except the pitching mound is my understanding, and she's going to be dominant. She's a left-handed hitter. She has a smooth swing that produces so much power. I still remember uh, probably my favorite swing of hers. It came in a game this past summer with the Minnesota Sticks. We were down one going into the last inning. Two minutes left on the clock. We were going into the last inning of a, a team named Fire Pro. First pitch of the inning. Cadence squares up on one. Absolutely steps on it. No doubter. Over the fence. Ties it up. Sean may or may not have jumped in my arms. I'm just glad I did not drop him. Either way, a big-time clutch hit when we needed at most this girl is only going to keep getting better which is great for byron not great for the other eight teams in the hbl wherever coach jake chooses to play her is the only question that i have with first dad the second of those freshmen mackenzie Steele, is the next one we need to talk about she also goes by max Steele. and if there was ever a name that should guarantee an opposing coach that you should award an intentional walk to a girl, it's probably Max Steele. And she backs it up too. This girl can square up on a ball and in any count. She never gets flustered. No matter if it's 0-2 or ahead 3-0, she is so composed at the plate. She can hit a lot of different pitches. She barrels up on a ball, a lot of line drives. Love watching her at the plate. She came up uh, to varsity halfway through last season as an eighth grader. She made a huge impact, two for three with five RBIs and a home run um, against Austin, and then two for three, or sorry, two for four with two RBIs against Cassie Manville in the opening round of playoffs. She's played shortstop. She can play third base. She can also pitch, which is good if Barons needs a break. Uh, you can have Max Steele uh, in the bullpen ready to go. I got to be witness to her impressive skill set last summer. I'll get to do it again this summer, so I feel very fortunate. But just as good as she is at softball player, she's such a nice girl. Underrated sense of humor. Very funny. Um, just love watching girls like that succeed. Hattie Mathry, the third of those freshmen. She's a solid uh, option at catcher. She also played a lot of utility positions, whether it be outfield or infield last year for Byron. She is a strong girl. I mean, evidence. She took fourth place at state for girls wrestling this last year. So definitely don't mess with her. I wouldn't. One of the best games was in week two for her. Uh, she went two for four with three RBIs against Goodhue. And that game was the first of a four-game hit streak for Mathry. Ju junior Leah Strain will be uh, will be back. She'll be bringing some of that upperclassman leadership that this Byron team will need. She anchors the outfield, likely center field, taking over for Schultz. And she can get on base. Strain hit 259 with a 322 on base percentage. 19 runs scored, 13 RBIs, four doubles, and six stolen and basis. Some other girls that uh, could make an impact for the Bears, senior outfielder Aubrey Meyer, junior Kayleen Irwin, they could flank strain in the outfield corners. It looks like Byron will start their season on April 2nd in Austin, and game two will be the home opener uh, for Byron, taking on Goodhue. That's scheduled for April 8th. The next team up for the HBL Conference, the Cannon Falls Bombers. The Bombers ended the year sitting in the third position in the HBL with a conference record of 8-2, and two, finished 15-6 and six overall. The Bombers beat Triton in the section over 18-0, but then back-to-back -back losses to Dover Yoda and Blooming Prairie would end their season. Eight seniors graduated from the Bombers program, three top players Return, though, senior Madison Burr, not just a lethal volleyball player for Cannon Falls. She is also one of the best defensive first basemen in recent program history. She has a 953 fielding percentage in a very difficult spot on the field. She can hit more than a volleyball, as last year she hit 414 for batting average, 1,300 slugging percentage, three triples, five home runs, 23 RBIs, 20 runs scored. And that's coming off a sophomore season where Burr hit 452 with 17 RBIs, three home runs, and eight doubles. Junior outfielder Avery Rustad, she's going to be back as well as a sophomore in 2023. She hit 444 with 12 doubles, one home run, 23 RBIs, 17 runs scored, and tracked down everything in the outfield with a 944 fielding percentage. Cannon Falls will have three more seasons with a top-tier pitcher. Just like Byron has with Barron's, Cannon Falls will have with Allie Pagel. She returns, Pagel does, after a freshman season that saw her go 9-2 and two with 77 strikeouts in 75 innings, 2.61 ERA. She's also dangerous at the plate. 377 batting average on base percentage, percentage of 436. Cannon Falls will start on the road at Pine Island Tuesday, April 2nd, before three straight home games against Kingsland, Rochester Lourdes, and then a doubleheader against Zombrota Mazeppa. 
Next up, the Goodhue Wildcats. Congratulations to their girls' basketball team. Just won the Class A girls' Uh, state championship, incredible performance there by Lodermeyer and Gadient, as well as the rest of the team. Congrats to Coach Josh Weemy. But now we're talking about softball season. Goodhue opened some eyes at the end of last season as they won three of their final four games and then went into sections and rattled off two wins in a row. Unfortunately, they would lose the next game by one run before losing to Southland in the final game of the year. The Wildcats finish 8-14 and 14 overall, 2-7 and seven in the conference, good for seventh place. Coach Kimberly, Kimberly Lundak will be leading a program that, uh, once again, that she will look to two girls, Izzy O'Reilly and Sierra Kallstrom, for leadership as these two were named captains for 2024. O'Reilly batted 280 last season with six RBIs. Emma Voth returns and will likely be the number one pitcher for the Wildcats on the mound. She racked up six wins with 89 strikeouts to only 13 walks last season. That's a ridiculous 7-to-1 strikeout-to-walk ratio. Both can hit the ball two, two triples, two doubles, and nine RBIs one year ago. Other girls that Coach Lundek will reply upon Kylie Mandelikow, uh, Morgan Rader, uh, Kendra Reader. Strong group of ninth grade girls apparently coming up to help that good Hugh Wildcat. They'll need them to step up earlier rather than later. Uh, we will see as the year gets going who's going to fill in for the Wildcat team. And speaking of which, Goodhue starts the season off at home against my Stewartville Tigers Thursday, April 4th. And then they will be on the road in Byron April 8th. And then back at home to take on Pine Island April 9th. Next up, the Cass and Manorville Comets. The Comets were 12, uh, 12 and 10 last season, 5 and 4 in the HBL, good for fourth place. The Comets started off the year strong, winning four of their first five games, but went just two and two in sections to end the season. The Comets will have to learn what life is like post Ella Babcock era. Babcock was one of the best pitchers in the conference last year, and she put the Comets on her back pitching as she threw all but nine varsity innings in 2023. Coach Paul man will likely turn to either Emily Olsen and or Kara Farnsworth to take the circle for KM. Olsen and Farnsworth, a couple of talented up-and-coming pitchers for this Comet program. You can't, can't talk about the Comets, though, without mentioning the dangerous duo of Andrea Fitch and Callie Richards, both seniors, both playing college softball next year. Callie Richards, virtually unstoppable at the plate last season. She hit 532 with three home runs, 17 RBIs. She was named Class 3A All-State first team to go along with all conference and all section. She has a strong arm. She can play infield. She's a solid catcher, and it's a huge gamble to try to take to steal a base with Richards behind the plate. She was named one of Minnesota's Super 100 seniors, and I believe she was in the top five for the list called Minnesota's Top Clutch Hitters. Incredible. One of the top players in the conference, uh, the HVL for sure. She's heading to Bemidji State to play next year. Andrea Fitch is the other half of that Comets dynamic duo, but with Richards managing the infield, Fitch will take care of the outfield. She has great speed. She can run down hits that you think are going to drop, probably in the gap, but then you find yourself heading back to the dugout because Fitch ran it down. In the batter's box, the five foot two senior hit 359 last season with 28 hits, 20 runs scored, six doubles, one triple, one home run, 12 RBIs, and stole seven bases. Fitch will be heading to Black Hills State next year to play for the Yellow Jackets. Abby Simons is hoping to keep her success rolling in her senior year. I believe she's one of the captains. She's coming off an incredible hockey season where she helped lead the Dodge County Wildcats to their first state appearance. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they went all the way to the title game. She signed on to play hockey at Augsburg, but she has unfinished business. One more season of sports in high school for her. It's softball and uh if she hits a softball, anything like she hits a slap shot, I would say we're all in a little bit of trouble. Innocent bystanders outside the fence line included if she hits one foul. A couple other players to watch for with this Comet team are senior outfielder uh, Aliana Dubois and the aforementioned Kara Farnsworth and Emily Nelson. Uh, maybe they can play, they can pitch, play outfield, play other positions. KM will start out the season at home March 26th against Pine Island. Snow's on the ground, so we'll see if that happens. I think that may be the earliest game on the calendar. There's another one that we'll talk about. April 2nd, the Comets will be on the road to take on the Cougars of Zimbrota Mazeppa. Next up, the Lake City Tigers. They could be considered to be in a rebuilding phase, 2-8 and eight in conference last season. They finished the year 5-14, and 14, but they did win their final four regular season games by scoring a total of 46 runs, so really hitting their stride when they needed it most. Lake City would drop the first game, though, uh, in the opening round to St. Charles uh, in section play. Kylie Mann is the top returning player for Lake City, a junior infielder. She hit 439 last year as a sophomore with 29 
29 hits, six doubles, four home runs, 19 RBIs, and 18 run, runs scored. Other returning players include first baseman Adelai Benedict, senior outfielder Grace Morrissey, pitcher Allison Dykes, catcher Matty Skifton, uh, Stevie Jostic, and then Lake City. I don't know if you'll see her this year or not, but Lake City has an ultra-talented eighth grader in Alana Schmitz. Uh, really solid pitcher. She can control the ball, really place it really well. She mixes up her speeds. Also, a, a great hitter, dangerous speed. She can lay down a bunt and beat it out to first. She does a great job hitting the ball to gaps and uh, stealing bases. Incredible. We've gotten to see her play the last two years. I don't know if you'll see her uh, this year for varsity for Lake City, but definitely a name to watch as the future of Lake City softball. That's Alana Schmitz. Lake City will be at home against Zimbrota Mazeppa on Tuesday, March 26th to start the 2024 season. The next team we got to talk about, Kim Jones, Pine Island Panthers. The Pi Panthers finished three and five in the HBL, good for sixth place, and even eight and eight overall last year. They started off the season winning two in a row. They had a three-game win streak in the middle of the season that included a win over bigger school, Rochester Mayo. Pine Island would fall to Blooming Prairie in a nail biter in sections six to five. Pine Island lost a top player in the HVL to graduation, that shortstop Cheyenne Jones. So they'll have to see what players are going to step up this year. On the mound, I think we know who that'll be. It'll be Caitlin Larum, who has been a steady presence for the Panthers in the circle over the past few seasons. She is closing in on almost 200 innings pitched at the varsity level. Right now, she'll well surpass that. She racked up 143 total strikeouts, 67% of those coming on a swing and a miss. So she will make batters look a little bit silly. 70% percent of batters she faces find their way back to the dugout one way or another. She only allows one walk every four innings, so controls her pitches very well. As, for, as, as good as she is on the mound, maybe even better at the plate, a career 365 batting average, 50 hits, 10 doubles, 36 RBIs. Kylie Passau is another name to watch, a 357 hitter with 28 hits, 6 doubles, 20 RBIs. The junior has 7 stolen bases, 6 sacrifice bunts to move runners around. Solid defensive player as Kylie has a 983 fielding percentage with 279 putouts. I believe she mans the corner there over at first base. Senior Sophia Polzer is another solid hitter for the Panthers. Plenty of experience, 144 plate appearances at the varsity level, 21 hits, 11 RBIs, but more impressive is that she walks as many times as she strikes out, so you know she's disciplined at the plate, not going to swing at bad pitches. She is a blazer on the base paths, 18 stolen bases for her. A few other players to watch on Pine Island's ro roster, Ava Pokrant, she had a 417 batting average in her limited opportunities. Jenna Schlusner, 365 uh, batting average, 19 hits, 4 doubles, 1 home run, 20 RBIs, and also boasts a 1,000 fielding percentage, perfect for her. Jaden Voltz and Tegan Barnett may also be names you hear this season for the Panthers. Coach Kim Jones will take Pine Island on the road for their season opener at Cass Manorville. You heard that March 26th, then two straight home games against Cannon Falls and Simley, respectively. That is April 2nd and April 5th. Uh, up next, the Rochester Lured Eagles. Eagles had a rough season last year, 6-13 and 13 overall, and fell by just one run to Dovriota in this Section 1 AA opening round. The numbers may not be there, um, so just a couple teams for the Leward Eagles, but there is a group of talented girls for Coach Becky Mackin. Amelie Dolman's a junior. She'll be returning. She's a pitcher, can play outfield. Anna Wieneke pitches, a sophomore that we got to see come up with some clutch hits this past season for the Minnesota Sticks. Kate Fredericks, uh, Lily Urban, Catherine Price, older sister uh, to Anna, Leah Wieneke. Allison Restovich, a big name in Rochester. I believe she can catch. She's pretty good. Uh, Regan Rowley, an eighth grader that can pitch, play second, play outfield, fast on the base pass. She can hit. So a lot of uh, intermixed talent in terms of the grade levels. You'll see a lot of juniors, sophomores, even down to eighth grade with Rowley. The Eagles start their season in Rochester against the Caledonia Warriors March 28th at 5 p.m. Next up, my Stewartville Tigers, baby. You know that this is my team. I'm wearing the shirt. And if you know anything about me, you know this is my squad. Finished the season last year 10 and 11, 4 and 5 in conference, good for fifth place. The Tigers had one of their best showings in the postseason, at least in recent memory. We beat Fairbolt before dropping our second game to Winona. Then we beat Austin and Cassie Manorville in back to back games to make that final three. Unfortunately, the Bears of Byron would end our season with a score of 5 to 1. Head coach Crystal Peterson will begin her third year leading 
in the Tiger program. She will have a complete overhaul of her roster as Stourville graduated 11. Yes, 11 seniors from last year's team. The Tigers will have to replace Elena Layton, a 453 hitter with 21 runs scored. Both of those led the team. Uh, catcher Grace Elton, who hit 339, eight doubles. She's playing at Viterbo University. Tressa Smith, Hannah Martinson, among others, all gone to graduation. Really, this team only returns three players that consistently played on varsity last season. First, you got to start with one of our five HVL stars to watch a pitcher, outfielder, Sydney Clark. She was an all-section, all-conference selection as just a freshman last year. She hit 364 with a 439 slugging percentage behind 24 hits, five doubles, 12 RBIs, 12 runs scored. For as good as she was at the plate, and she went out blistering hot to start the season, was hitting over 500 halfway through the year. It was what she did on the mound that held Stewartville to double-digit wins in 2023. Out of those 10 wins, Clark had seven of them. Sydney, seven. 7-3 with a 2.25 ERA, 77 strikeouts in only 74 innings pitch. And even in those losses, she was solid. Just look at the Byron game in Stewartville. We lost 2-0 to a very good state-ranked Byron team. We were about five feet away from a Savannah Dean fly ball to right field from tying that game up in the seventh inning. Opponents only hit 220 off Clara last year. If she continues to pitch like she did last year, these next three years, Stewartville is going to find themselves in a lot of games. But it can't just be Clark. This is a nine-girl team that we need to put out there. And where is Stewartville going to look? Well, the only two remaining players that come back with varsity experience, Veronica Mitchell and Savannah Hadeen. They are both seniors. Mitchell played shortstop and hit 244 last year with a 333 on base percentage. Veronica coming up in some clutch situations, a few big hits in crucial moments. The one I remember against Century, finding the gap to put us ahead and ultimately win that game. Uh, she had 10 hits with three doubles and her first career home run in Tiger Nation. It was at home, 13 runs scored and eight doubles for Mitchell in 2023. Uh... Hadeen, she was used quite a bit last year. Moore is a designated player uh, for her bat. Um, she, she hits, she can play first base though. She hits right-handed, but is a lefty in the field. So that's why sometimes we put her at, at first base. She hit 340 last season with 12 hits, two doubles, one home run, 12 runs scored, and nine RBIs. And Hadeen is going to try to recreate the magic of her sophomore season with that bat that saw her lead the team in batting average, home runs, and RBIs. So those are the three that are returning from our varsity roster. Two girls that have a small taste of varsity experience, but will will need to make a big impact for us and I think are going to be fantastic juniors, Kaylee Learman and Addie Ackerman. Learman will take over for Grace Elton at catcher, and that will be no easy job as Sydney Clark and Adia Ackerman throw absolute gas. Uh, Learman, she was called up on short duty for about a week. I think three or four games she played for us. She hit a triple against Lake City. She she did a fantastic job for us. She is a solid hitter. She hit an absolute bomb and dome ball for me this winter. So it looks like she's in mid-season form. Uh, I was going to say before the snow started falling. Well, it was before the snow started falling, but it's here now. Uh, but definitely before the first official practice, she was already looking fantastic. She has some serious wheels too. Underrated speed. Uh, fierce competitor, something that actually caught me off guard because she's been more quiet and soft-spoken and composed around me. But man, when that game starts, she was, uh, she's a competitor. She, uh, that fire burns hot. And let me tell you, if the fire is hot enough, you can melt anything. And we're going to need Learman's fire to help us win some games this year. Addie Eckerman's the other one I talked about, an up-and-coming varsity player that can do some damage. She's a tall left-handed pitcher. She can really wing the ball. And trust me, she bruised like this entire part of my hand when I was trying to warm her up. Uh, incredible. This girl has flames coming out of the softball when she releases it, and when she is on, she is almost unhittable. She could not have looked better on the mound this winter in Austin Ball League, and we're hoping she carries that right into her junior season. She can play first base, she can play outfield, and when Clark pitch, uh, when Clark's pitching, she can play those other positions. Uh, she can hit. She's a lefty, great bunter. But it may be an even split. When you talk about the talent on the mound, Coach Peterson, it's a nice problem to have because Sidney Clark and Addie Ackerman are 1A and 1B. They are both fantastic, both varsity quality pitchers. And we got at least two years and then three with Clark. Uh, not a bad problem to have in Tiger Nation to have incredible pitchers that you're like, who do I start? So Clark, Ackerman, if you look down the pipeline, Ella Minnick coming up as a ninth grader. She, she probably will be on JV this year. Uh, but the, the cupboard is full for Coach Peterson. An incredible, incredible group of eighth and seventh grade talent coming up through the pipeline for Stewartville softball. So Stewartville softball program has got to be excited for the future. Uh, not only what's coming up now for varsity, 
but what's ahead? Not only will uh, Stewartville look to that, that younger group, and we don't know who's moving around, but Stewartville will have eight seniors trying to make the jump from JV last year and fighting for spots this year. I think this week and practices and early games will go a long way to see who's going to make the biggest impact for Stewartville. Stewartville's actually on the bus right now, heading to Cocoa Beach, Florida. As I record this, they will have some scrimmages down there, and they will start their season out on April 2nd against Albert Lee. That will be at home in Tiger Nation, um, Albert Lee of the Big Nine Conference. The last team we got to talk about, the Zambroda Mazeppa Cougars. I don't want to say we saved the best for last because I, you know, I'm a huge Stewartville fan, and that probably won't be fair, but Zambroda Mazeppa did win the HBL Conference last year with a record of 9-1. and one. They went deep into the Section 1-2A playoffs, 3-2 and two over overall, uh, but they fell to La Crescent 5-4, to four, ending their season. Their record finished in 2023, 19-6. Ten times, ten times the Cougars scored ten or more runs in the game, so they can sure hit the ball. Coach Kevin Nelson returns after his conference championship season, and I believe he said he's been a head coach for like 35 years, and if I'm reading the 2023 roster correctly, they only graduated one senior from last year's incredible team, second baseman Lola Wagner. So Zambrota Mazeppola, likely the team to beat this year in the HVL. But heartbreaking news out of the Cougars softball campus, top hitter and outstanding pitcher Cora Ohm will have to sit out the uh, season after suffering an injury in January. Huge loss for the Cougars. Ohm was one of the top pitchers for ZM. She hit 439 with 35 runs scored and 18 RBIs last year. Just hate to see that gutted for a special talent not to be able to show it off on the softball field. We we here at What in the HVL wish her the best in her recovery. Cougars Plenty of talent behind uh, behind Coach coming back. Like I said, only one senior graduating. Well, it's got to start with All-State. Cameron Culvers returns for her final season in the Navy in silver. She was first team All-State in Class 2A to go along with all HBL. All-section Culvers was 14-5 and five with a 2.86 ERA. 96 strikeouts to only 24 walks. Culvers hit two, 422 with 31 RBIs, 27 runs scored, four doubles, a triple, and two home runs. Megan Jasperson had a 430 batting average with a 511 on base percentage, 23 RBIs, 29 runs scored, five doubles, two triples for Jasperson. Melanie Roche was another one of those five ZM hitters last year that went over 400 batting average. Uh, Roche hit 427 with 27 RBIs, 30 runs scored behind seven doubles and tied for the team lead in home runs with three. Some other names to watch out for, Elizabeth Winkles, who hit 362 with 12 runs scored. Paisley Peterson, great last name, by the way. She hit 339 with 13 runs scored. Trinity Chapa, who had three home runs and 24 RBIs with a 338 batting average. And Addie Liffrey, who hit 306 with 17 RBIs and 12 runs scored. The team collectively, as a group, they hit a ridiculous 374 with 200 163 hits, 38 of those doubles, 7 triples, 10 home runs. They racked up 222 runs on the season, 188 RBIs. When you have a pitcher like Culver's and a lineup with Jasperson, Rosh, Winkles, and the others that can rake, the HVL has officially been put on notice with the ZM Cougars. Looking ahead to games this week, not a ton of them. I said that it, there's not a ton of them. Just two, Pine Island at Cass Manville, Zimbrota Mazeppa at Lake City. That's Tuesday March 26th, I think we were probably a little bit optimistic uh, with the weather. I don't know if we'll get those games in. I will do my absolute best to keep up on the schedule changes due to weather and due to scheduling conflicts or whatever. But at least for now, these are the two games that we have. I know Stewartville's on their way down to Florida for some scrimmages. I think some other teams have done scrimmages in the domes. Uh, so really exciting time here for all you high school softball fans here in southeastern Minnesota. It could be a short episode. If these two games happen, it could be a short episode next week. Otherwise, I'll probably just delay it till games actually do start happening. And episode two, we will break down those first week of games. I appreciate you tuning in for the first episode of What in the HVL? If you have anything you want to contribute to the weekly show, whether it be pictures or videos, stats, stories, corrections on names, I hate to mispronounce names, so if you help me out there, please feel free to email me at tigernationandbeyond at gmail.com. You spell it out, tigernationandbeyond at gmail.com. You can send me something on Twitter uh, underneath when I release the episode uh, previews or whatever. Uh, I will do my best to include everything I can. I want to give a huge thank you to the conference coaches that did get back to me, got me all the information on their team. Almost, uh, mo almost all the teams responded. Most of them, um, 
got me information, got me stats. So like I told each coach, we could not do this without your help. So I really appreciate it. I want to say from what in the HVL, best of luck to all the teams starting their seasons, all the players. I'm hoping for a healthy season with lots of fun and tons of success for all of you, except maybe when you're playing Stewartville, if you want to, you know, go easy, sit it out that game. Cause you know who I'll be cheering for. Even though I'm an HVL fan, Stewartville comes number one here, baby. Uh, anyway, I appreciate you tuning in, listening to the premiere episode, the team previews on episode one of What in the HVL. We'll catch you out on the fields.